Welcome to this new podcast dedicated to computational antitrust. My name is Thibaut Schrepel, I'm a faculty affiliate at Stanford University Codex Center, and I'm delighted to be with you. As I will explain, the format of this first episode will be different from the following ones. Today, I want to tell you about our project and then define computational antitrust. So here we are. The Computational Antitrust Project is a new project launched in January 2021 within Stanford University Codex Center. The project gathers over 50 antitrust agencies to these days and 35 academics in the advisory board. Each month or so, we publish an academic article on the subject of computational antitrust. You may find them at computationalantitrust.com. Some of these articles will be authored by antitrust law scholars, explaining where and how the law could benefit from computational tools, and some by technology scholars, exploring how these tools could contribute to the field of antitrust. We have decided to launch this podcast to complement these publications. I will then be discussing computational antitrust with our contributors coming from the field of law, economics, and computer science. The format will be rather short, about 30 minutes per episode. The podcast, available on all aggregators such as Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more, also has a video counterpart. We are indeed recording a video of all of our conversations, which you may access on our YouTube channel. Now, you may be wondering, what is computational antitrust? Should you be looking for a proper definition? Here's one. Computational antitrust is a new domain of legal informatics which seeks to develop computational methods for the automation of antitrust procedures and the improvement of antitrust analysis. Going further, I want to explore the potential and the limits of computational antitrust. The remaining part of my talk today is actually based on the first article that I wrote and that you may access on our website. It is entitled Computational Antitrust, an Introduction and Research Agenda. So let me start with the potential. Why do we need computational antitrust? And why now? Well, here's why. The digital economy is bringing a constant flow of antitrust infringements. So there's more. And besides increasing, anti-competitive behaviors are becoming more complex. As a result, antitrust agencies face difficulties in detecting and analyzing illegal practices, and many computational violations remain unpunished. On top of that, companies also suffer from the lack of clarity. One response is to call for ex ante regulations and avoid legal proceedings. Another response is computational antitrust. Computational tools, which I will define as problem-solving computer methods, can indeed improve antitrust procedures and analysis, namely to make them faster, more effective and accurate. In short, the idea is to simplify processes and bring more information to the table, which is a precondition for informed decision-making. In concrete terms, agencies could first detect more practices while companies could step up their games when it comes to compliance. Today, competition agencies are mostly relying on reactive methods, such as leniency application, for detecting collusion. As a result, and according to several scholars, the annual probability that a cartel will be detected, conditional on being detected, is between 13 and 17% only. Here, competitional tools could help, for instance, by increasing the efficiency of market screening with scrapping methods and putting in place APIs. Second, competitional tools could enable agencies and companies to process data more efficiently and, in the end, understand practices better. They could, indeed, increase the speed by which they analyze documents and also integrate more valuables. For example, the European Commission had to analyze 1.7 billion search queries in the Google Shopping case. Similarly, the UK Competition Agency, the CMA, had access to Google and Bing search events for one week only and analyzed around 4 billion of them. Competitional tools are needed. Machine learning, natural language processing and understanding could help. 
our project will explore how. This also applies to the field of merge control. As we know, the European Commission has analyzed over 2.7 million documents in the merger between Bayer and Monsanto. At times, agencies cannot trust data. Blockchain could help to ensure the integrity of the data transmitted to those agencies, while those agencies could put back the information they gathered from the data back into the blockchain so that companies can design better remedies. Last, computational tools will also help in the field of competition policies, for example, by allowing easier retrospective analysis for decisions and regulations. So these are some of the potentials, but of course, we also face challenges. The first is to identify which fields of antitrust law can be computed. It might be fairly easy in cases involving pricing strategies, but more complex when it comes to non-pricing practices. The second challenge relates to developing the right tools for the fields of antitrust that can be computed. This is a technical challenge which is already getting a technical answer. Some first computational tools are ready and actually used by a few agencies. The third challenge is tied to the role one should give computational tools and their outputs in decision-making processes. To quote George Akeloff in a recent article, there are important topics and problems that are difficult to approach in the hard way. They should not be disregarded. And of course, there is a great institutional challenge. Agencies have to get ready using these tools by acquiring the relevant expertise. They also have to consider how to use these tools during the entire decision-making process, and so on. All that is very exciting. We are on the edge of the new world. Antitrust without computer science is like Sherlock without Watson, Boney without Clyde, or as a friend put, a caveman without light. So what's next? Well, we are currently in the process of scattering our first publications and interviews. You should hear from us very soon. Until then, we encourage you to visit our website, computationalantitrust.com, and also the Codex Center website to find out about groundbreaking projects in the field of legal informatics. Take care, and thank you very much for your interest in computational antitrust. Bye-bye.